This is the Bartholomew Town Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome in to another episode of the Bartholomew Town Podcast. I'm Bill Bartholomew. Always a pleasure to spend some time together here on the pod as we continue our election coverage as promised. A ton of one-on-ones, and I'll have more news and info, I guess, which are one and the same, on the upcoming debate series, which I'm super psyched about. We'll have that for you, I think, either later this week or certainly by next week. Um, as promised, a debate forum series that will be in conjunction with the Bartholomew Town Podcast and WPRO. So stand by for that. That's coming soon. But for today, Stefan Pryor is running against James Diosa in the Democratic primary for general treasurer. Now, of course, he was most recently Commerce Secretary in Rhode Island. And today we get into some of the specifics of how that experience and his previous experience will translate into a role as general treasurer, plus a whole bunch more. And we also talk about the fact, we kind of hint at it, that his opponent, James Diosa, is one of just a few candidates who have declined to participate in the upcoming debate series. Um, As of the taping of this podcast episode, I believe we still hadn't received a um, a finalized no from the Diosa side. However, as of this moment, Diosa will not be participating in the general treasurer debate. No problem. Coming up in a couple of weeks, you'll have another chance to hear Mr. Pryor as we do a one-on-one for an hour in what would have been the general treasurer debate. So that is on the agenda for today. Remember, if you have any questions or comments for candidates, feel free to send me an email, bill at ripodcast.com or tweet at me at Bill Bartholomew. Hey guys, with the increasing legalization of cannabis across the country, including most recently here in Rhode Island, the cannabis industry is growing at an accelerating pace. If you are already in the industry or wondering what is the best path to break into the cannabis field, the University of Rhode Island has a program to help educate you in the evolving space. Fully accredited by URI's College of Pharmacy, the online certificate program covers topics related to product development, chemical analysis and testing, and patient and customer therapeutics. The application deadline for the fall session is August 2nd, coming right up, and the courses start on September 6th. Learn more at uri.edu slash online slash cannabis or give them a call at 401-874-5280. All right, so Stefan Pryor, former Commerce Secretary, now running for General Treasurer. You've got a primary coming up against James Dio, so we can get into that in just a minute. But first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. Good to be with you. So big news last night. I know this is no longer directly under your purview, but we'd be remiss not to start with this. Tidewater landing in a tie-breaking vote on behalf of Governor McKee has advanced for, for in the most basic of terms. Um, are you satisfied with the deal right now? And you obviously were one of the people behind the scenes, public facing, that were involved in those negotiations. Where, what's your take right now? I'm glad that it is advancing. Um, it's very important that we keep our eye on the taxpayer protection provisions. So um, in my time, I helped to negotiate some of the provisions that are now part of the framework. Uh, I'm still taking a very close look to make sure that I get the, the fine print and understand it myself. But mm-hmm. Um, I think it's good that they are staying within the overall dollar authorization. They're not allocating new money. That's important. I think it's also good that they have a provision where until the stadium is built, the dollars do not flow. We, we think of that as the certificate of occupancy provision where you get C of O and dollars will flow. That way you don't have a partially built stadium. The taxpayers are on the hook and we didn't get anything out of it. That's very positive. There are some other features, too. There's going to be some sharing in the upside if there is a major profit. It sounds like upon sale. I need to look closely at that provision. I would have liked to see there be a revenue share all the way through the cash flow of the project. Um, So I I need to look closely at that. The point being, let's make sure all of us who are advocates, I'm now, you know, on the outside, help helping uh, as an advocate in that sense. Let's make sure that the taxpayer provisions, uh, protection provisions stay in. Because I think that Rhode Islanders don't want to see yet another project where, you know, it's not a fair uh, construction where Rhode Islanders don't don't share if it does very well, where it gets partially built. But I do think that a lot of these provisions have been built in. And fundamentally, if it can be framed well, with taxpayer protections. I do think it matters to Pawtucket, to the Blackstone Valley, to Rhode Island, that we have a professional soccer team, that we have a beautiful new uh, sports and entertainment venue, so long as one last piece here, 
we hold the developer accountable for building the subsequent phase, which involves, at a minimum, residential units, retail, parking, and other things that, when you think about the new feet on the street with the residential and the retail commercial activity, that will bring tax revenue and vibrancy to the Blackstone Valley. Those are very important. So we need to hold the developer accountable for doing that piece as well. Yeah, that's something that that has been, the scope of the project has been scaled back and there's a lot of reasons and we could get into that and you've certainly answered questions on that on, on a number of occasions, but just kind of wrapping up Tidewater, holding the developer accountable, how, do, how can that be done? I mean, is there is it, is it part of the agreement where there's a revocation of that that those dollars that would flow should the project not continue to expand physically into residential units and so on and so forth? Yes. Um, th- there's two different possible routes, and I believe that at least one of these is built in as it stands. I've got to take a close look, got mm-hmm. to get the materials. But one way is that the the land rights, the real estate rights, may be revoked for the subsequent phase. So that's a municipal provision, but the state and city are working together. The city of Pawtucket will be able to pull the land back so that it gives them deadlines. And if they haven't developed, it's gone and it may go to someone else. And the reason that matters is fortuitous, the developer wants the benefit if they build the stadium of the surrounding development and the revenue that it'll bring. So that's very important um, in the municipal development agreements. And then also there should be some financial feature as well, meaning there could be penalties if the development doesn't proceed. There could be a pullback on the subsidies on the first phase on the stadium. I don't know whether they got to that point in the negotiation, but that would that would be beneficial as well. Let's talk about the race. You know, that's what we're here for. So uh, why run for treasurer? You know, you had a a, a job that was pretty sweet by a lot of standards and you were doing some some big time work for the state. Yes. Why run for treasurer? Uh, I I really enjoyed the job and I did it for almost eight years, seven and a half years. And I do believe that you make your contribution and you should know when, look, it may be maybe time for me to actually think about how else I can contribute, what else I can do. That's part of it. Another part of it is that I think the treasurer's office is well positioned to do more for the economy. Mm -hmm. So uh, under recent treasurers, there's been a lot in the way of stabilization of the finances of the state and the pension fund that's under management by the treasurer. There's been a lot of progress on that. We're seeing some healthy growth in the pension fund. There's more work to be done, but credit to recent treasurers, it's going in the right direction. Given that strong platform in the treasurer's office, I think we can now build upon that platform and boost the economy even more using the tools of the treasurer's office and, frankly, developing new tools. So Mm -hmm. what I'd like to see us do with a focus on the economy in the treasurer's office is make the treasurer's office the permanent home for financing for small businesses Let small businesses, minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses, businesses that typically have lower levels of access to capital that are often coming from behind, give them a shot at financing that is orchestrated by the treasurer's office, working in concert with banks, credit unions, the Commerce Division, a lot of other players, but make it a major priority for small businesses to receive the financing they need. This is especially important, Bill, if we do end up in, I'm not wishing for this, but if we do end up in a recession. Yeah, of um, course, the, no one wants that. That's no for sure. one wants it, but small businesses are the first to suffer. They often uh, need to make it through by covering fixed costs, rent, keeping the lights on, maintaining their inventory, Paying staff, even if they they shrink their staff, they have fixed costs that they need to pay. Helping them get through is very important. And it it was uh, a doable thing when there was federal funds flowing in. uh, And we did a lot of that out of commerce. I want to make sure that happens through all the phases of the economy going forward and make the permanent home for such financing the treasurer's office. And there's a lot more we can do to convene regarding the economy, to create a vision for the economy, talk about the big moves in the economy, and have the treasurer be a real leader about ensuring that Rhode Island is 
forever advancing its economy in a direction that works for everyday Rhode Islanders and the jobs that everyday Rhode Islanders need. Yeah, because I think a lot of people probably don't even know what the treasurer does. You right. know, we would see with Treasurer Magaziner that there would be, you don't have a ton of specific policy control, for example, but he pulled, I think it was assault weapons manufacturers, if I, it may have been broadly weapons manufacturers, out of the state's pension fund in terms of the, of the pool of, an, of, of the portfolio. Um, so you see that public facing wise, but you don't necessarily know exactly what the treasurer does. So what are some of the tools that you would that you already have in your toolbox? So on a day one perspective, you'd say, hey, this is what I want to do with the exist the office as it's currently constituted. Yeah, good question, Bill. So the treasurer helps to uh, advise and size uh, regarding uh, bond issuances, helps to manage the pension fund, which needs to be very carefully managed with an eye on the prize of ensuring that we uh, sustain and grow payments to our valued public servants as they retire. That's got to be the, the mission. But also it is an investment fund, so you can start to think about how do you, all things being equal, carefully, professionally, appropriately get some more development going, get some more investment going in Rhode Island mm -hmm. using that fund. Um, also, the treasurer's office in Rhode Island has a big role around school construction. Credit to Tre Treasurer Magaziner working with then Governor Raimondo, uh, major leadership around building more schools. That's extremely important to the education of our young people. We need conducive to learning spaces for teaching and learning for our teachers and our students. We also need safe spaces, secure spaces in today's day and age. Yep. Doing that well is extremely important. Uh, I served as state education commissioner in Connecticut, and my tenure included uh, the period of time when Sandy Hook occurred in Connecticut, and I learned a lot the hard way, never would, would have wished it, my goodness, but learned a lot about school security, and I would make a priority of ensuring that we build more schools, high-quality schools, schools that are great for teaching and learning, and secure schools that don't look like prisons, Sure, but, uh, but help our young people stay safe. Um, and then um, in Rhode Island, the Victims' Compensation Fund is managed by the treasurer. One thing that I'd like to work on there um, is that um, victims of domestic violence may be eligible for that fund. Um, now, I would also like to ensure that we enable partners in a relationship, women or other partners who are escaping a violent relationship, to get out before there's a crime, mm. to get out uh, so that they can remain safe and live their lives independently. One of the challenges, Bill, that, for example, a woman in such a relationship may, uh, one of the challenges she may face is joint bank accounts, entangled finances, where you can't get out. And if you if you use your joint credit cards, you're gonna be detected. You, you, your, for example, husband may know where you are. So I'd like to work on bridge financing tools for partners escaping such relationships, have anonymous bridge financing for them through a new tool coming out of the treasurer's office. So you can see how in each and every instance, we can build upon the tools presented, and we can make even more progress for Rhode Islanders, including the most vulnerable Rhode Islanders, uh, including uh, individuals in communities of color who are entrepreneurs and aiming to seek financing for their small businesses, uh, minority-owned small businesses, including women who are escaping violent or abusive relationships. We can do this and grow the economy at the same time. Sure. <clears throat> Those micro-entities that make up so much of our economy right now and, and and don't necessarily have the tools they need to expand maybe even into small businesses at some point and who exactly. knows what else. Exactly. Um, let's talk about the matchup with James Diosa. So, look, uh, we're having a debate series here on the podcast that'll air on WPRO as well. And yes. pretty much everyone in that's running in a Democratic primary on the statewide or federal level has agreed to participate. James Diosa in the treasurer's race, your opponent, the former Central Falls mayor, hasn't. What's your thoughts on that? I don't know why he is hiding from the debates, why he's ducking them. Um, I, I don't think we should be doing the minimum in terms of debates. I think with, with the state of the economy, with inflation rising, with recession on the horizon, I'm not wishing for that, but that's what the national economists and global economists are saying. 
the treasurer can play a real role in keeping our economy strong here in Rhode Island. I believe I'm well positioned to serve in that role. I have a lot of experience working with the economy, played a role working with other key leaders in helping Rhode Islanders get through the COVID-related economic downturn, working with Governor Raimondo on helping us get out of the uh, lasting after effects of the Great Recession. We've done very well. Plenty to, plenty to do. Plenty to do. But Moody says we have one of the strongest recoveries in the United States of America. Second position in the country last time I checked. Two out of 50 for the strength of our recovery coming out of the COVID-related downturn. But we have to keep it that way. We have to keep it that way. Why is James DeYosa ducking these debates? It's hard for me to know. He is a former mayor who did debates when he was running for mayor. He's got the experience with debating. I actually haven't done debates. This this is, you know, my first statewide candidacy uh, and my uh, first uh, opportunity to be in debates. So I am excited about the possibility of doing it. And frankly, I'll be here if he's here or not. Yeah, uh, I'll be ready to debate, and I, I honestly think it's it's not particularly responsible to enter into a contest for such a serious position as treasurer in the midst of this economic flux, this economic uncertainty, and not get out there and talk about everything you would do to help every Rhode Islanders, everyday Rhode Islanders, get through the tough times if they arrive. So there's that, and we'll see. It, it remains to be seen if, if he will, in fact, agree to, to debate, but we will have that here for you on the podcast and on WPRO, whether or not he is in attendance or not. We may be and back I will here, be here two weeks doing this over again. That's that's a fact. Um, last question here. It is your first statewide run. Uh, how do you like being a politician? You know, I'm really enjoying it. I have to say, uh, I really enjoy just getting out there and talking with Rhode Islanders about what their needs are. Um, it's um, it's good to be out past the most severe portions of the COVID pandemic, yeah. uh, be, moving beyond any form of restrictions or guidance and moving more towards reopening and keeping businesses strong. So I, I love getting out there and hearing what would help keep you strong as a business person, a small business person with a shop or a restaurant or or everyday Rhode Islanders, you know, how, how is your employment? What are you looking for? What are you looking for for your children? How can we keep more of our young people in Rhode Island once they graduate from college or a training program and so that they don't have to go off to another state to find employment? I love those conversations. And I frankly, I love just shaking hands and chatting with people and it gives me energy. Um, and um, I have to say, uh, coming back to the question you asked about my opponent, um, you know, I don't think this is about gamesmanship. You know, you, you may have heard my opponent. I did a mock like uh, Twitter site. Uh, yeah, m- Stefan for R I dot right. dot com for dot net or whatever it was. Right. That, yeah, that was a bizarre scene. There's I mean, no question. That kind of gamesmanship, that kind of honestly um, not terribly mature approach to campaigning, I'm not about at all. Yeah. What I do believe in is debating meeting people where they are, speaking about the importance of the economy and keeping it strong, and that kind of campaigning, I'm into it. And I think that's what Rhode Islanders want in a candidate for treasurer. Yeah, and, and you know, again, it's it remains to be seen whether or not he agrees. He has agreed to do two television debates, evidently, but you have to wonder, and, and I'm not sure I can explain it either, why you wouldn't want to get out in front of people in this scenario, look, I understand there are some races here in Rhode Island in the past where, you know, your former uh, Governor Mundo, who I believe appointed you, right? I mean, that, because the office itself became yes. a cabinet level position With during con- your confirmation from the Senate. Exactly. Grateful to them as well. But yes. So she didn't debate in her Democratic primary. Alan Fung didn't debate in the previous Republican primary. There's an argument to be made there, though, that there's a campaign strategy at play that, hey, your your opponents are polling so far behind you that it's it's a different animal. I'm not condoning it, but in this race you have two people who are neither are incumbents. It's just it really doesn't I don't see the strategy there either just from an observer. Uh, I agree and I have to say if if the reason is that he doesn't feel ready for prime time, that he's not ready to talk about the issues, why 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 aim for this particular office? Why aim for political office? You know, people have People are better fits for different things in life, 
And I really feel confident that I'm ready to be our state treasurer. I want to take the office to the next level. There's been a good track record in recent years in across recent treasurers. We can do much more with it, especially given where our, our economy is. I think I'll be a good partner for other elected officials, other appointed officials, the legislature. I know how to work within that system, but I'm also not a politician. So I know uh, I, I'm more in touch with the rest of the world small business people, everyday Rhode Islanders. I want to bring all of that perspective, even though I know how to get it done. I want to bring the perspective of Rhode Islanders to the treasurer's office and keep the economy strong. Stefan Pryor, he's running for treasurer here in Rhode Island. We'll see in a couple of weeks as we have our, we launch our debate series with the treasurer's debate. Thank you, Bill. Great to be on with you. Pleasure. At HealthSource RI for Employers, we provide access to health insurance to more than 1,100 local businesses and nonprofits, and 96% of them renew through us every year. Maybe it's our choice of 19 different health plans, our 10 years of customizing solutions, or our one local team of dedicated experts helping employers find quality health insurance. See how our numbers stack up for you. Learn more at healthsourceri.com/employers.